hi everyone. Welcome to the next episode of our Stash Dive Knit Along. I uh, hope you've been enjoying your progress so far. We started off looking at swatching and colours in the first week. Second week you knit down the back to the underarm and last week you would have knit the front with neck shaping down as far as the underarm to match the back. Now the next thing we're going to move on this week to is we're going to take a look at working in the round, joining the front and the back and then working round and round like that. Most of that is going to be exactly the same with the main difference being that instead of doing right side and wrong side rows, everything's a right side row. So you're just knitting round and round. What I will show you is I'm going to show you later on in this video how to do um, a helical stripes because that one and you're only going to use those for sections where you're alternating colors in those fade sections and it's a way of working through each of them so that you don't have an obvious line where you're moving from one to another but before we start it onto that I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the neck edging um, specifically because I ran into something that happened to me after I finished the last section um, very often when I'm doing something like this, which it's a fingering weight and it's knit very loosely, I find that my gauge can change quite a bit. And particularly when I'm knitting the long rows, it frequently loosens up. And that happened for me this time. So, you know, if that's happened to you, you're definitely not alone. Most of it, it's not a problem because I know that the, uh, the width that I want, if it's a little bit wider, unless it's like terribly wider, isn't really going to make much of an issue. Where it has caused a problem for me is my neck because the neck opening I took was really quite wide to start with. And so having a little bit extra width on that is not something I wanted. Combined with that is the fact that because I'm knitting a loose gauge fingering, it's really stretchy, so the openings have no cohesion. So before I moved on to the body, I decided that I'm going to go finish the neck. Now there's a couple of things I'm going to try to give myself a kind of a firmer edge to the neck, which I think will help it hold its shape, which means that the fabric itself can be loose, but my edging can have a little bit more uh, cohesiveness to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a needle size. For the main body, I'm using four millimeter needle, but for the neck, I'm going to drop down to three and a half millimeters. So that by itself is going to make the gauge tighter, which will make it firmer. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the textured yarn. So I'm going to take the uh, this gray, the textured gray, and the very last color that I was going to do, this dark gray, and I'm going to work those two together for my neck edging. Because it's going to have the two together, it'll make for a thicker fabric and combined with knitting at a tighter gauge, I think it'll give me a really nice edging. You can use any kind of uh, edging stitch you want, but I'm just going to stick with a knit two, purl two for my edging. So the one last thing that I'm going to do is when I pick up around the edges of my work, I'm going to go ahead and um, not pick up every single stitch. So along the back where I've got the cast on edges, normally you'd pick up one stitch for every cast on a stitch. I'm going to go maybe leave every fifth one out. So I'm picking up four and then the fifth one I'm skipping over. And for the sides, it's going to be the same as it always would be. So I'm not worrying about the actual number of stitches. When I picked it up, what I did was I was just looking at ratios. And then on the first round, when I was doing knit two, purl two, when I got to the end and I realized I either needed one less or two less or two more, I just, I, what I did is I decreased the very last stitch and then I got a um, four stitch repeat from my, my two knit stitches and two purl stitch repeats. So this is my sweater here. Let me hold it up in front. You can see the colors are coming along quite nicely and I've just picked up those stitches along the edge. Now I'll stick it over here put it here underneath the edge of the work. This was the back edge of, of the sweater here. Um, where am I? Um, this was the back of the right shoulder. So I started there picking up my stitches along the back and then picked them all the way along the front here and then finished up back over here. What that is going to do is 
I'm going to try and knit it nice and tightly and do a nice tight bind off and bringing it in probably, I'm guessing two inches. If it looks like it's going to flare out, you can even add a couple of decreases if you want. I've got, the needle I've got is a little bit too long. So what I'm going to actually do as I work is just pull a loop like this. So it's like a fake three, um, a magic loop. So what I'm going to do is I've got my two yarns work together like this and I'm just happily working along in the stitch pattern until I come to this and then I pull a loop out the other side. So it's often how I kind of fake having um, a longer, a, a shorter needle than I do. So I, because right now I don't have my full needle stash or the full amount of cords. So I'm just kind of making do with what I've got. So it's kind of like a, an ad hoc magic loop. So I'm going to go knit this uh, two knit, two pearl ribbing for probably be about two inches. I'll put it up in the blog when I've done it. But the biggest and most important thing I'm going to do is keep trying it on and to see what you're doing. So that's the biggest thing with these kind of top down knits is keep trying it on. If you've got a second needle, it doesn't even have to be the same size, but just slip half of your stitches, whether it's for the neck or whether it's for the body, slip them on to a second needle and keep trying it on to see if you like it. And there's a lot of changes that you can make along the way if you're not totally happy with it. So like for the, for instance, with this, I realized that my neck was far too open. So before I went further, I'm going to go see if I can straighten that out. The reason I've gone with um, the darkest color at the base is I feel that that will kind of balance all the colors out so that we'll have, we'll finish the sweater with that, but by having it on the top edging, it should kind of anchor or draw all the colors together and make it look a lot more cohesive, or that's what I'm hoping. So um, I'm gonna finish this neck off and I'll show that to you then. And then after that, I'll show you at that point how to do the uh, helical stripes. Well, I've gone and I've finished off the neckline and I'm really happy I went and finished that before I started the rest of the garment because I think that now I know it all fits and I'm very happy with it. So let me just hold it up here. This is my finished neckline. So you can see it's a nice bit of firmness to it because it's in double stranded with the textured yarn and the second yarn and I did a tight bind off, as in when I was binding off, I just pulled the yarn nice and tightly. And so what that means is it's got a nice firmness to it and it's not going to stretch out. Now, because the neck opening was fairly wide to start with, it means that even putting a couple of inches of edging on like this is still going to leave me a pretty decent sized neck opening. So I'm very happy with that and how it came out. So now that that one's finished, we're going to move on and we're going to finish the body. And if you've set up the kind of textured pattern you want to work with your body, you're going to continue that on through. Um, when you join the front and the back, because we're just doing a drop shoulder, we're not going to cast on any stitches under the arms. You're just going to knit the front stitches and then take your back stitches and knit the back stitches. And remember, when you finished your back stitches, put a marker so that you know where the start of your round is. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, when we're doing the top down, sorry, the, when we're doing the front of it and the back of it when it was back and forth, when you're doing it flat, you've got a right side row and then you've got a wrong side row. And when we were alternating the colors, we were doing it where we had two right side rows with each color and then two wrong side rows. When you're doing that in the round, it's far easier because all you're going to be doing is you'll knit one round with one color and then you'll knit another round with the other color. And that's all we'll be doing. Now, if you start and finish them all at the very same spot at the beginning of the round or even somewhere else, you're going to end up with a jog where it'll jump from one color to the next. Because it's at the side seam, it isn't going to be all that big a deal, but I thought I would take the opportunity to show you how to do helical stripes. Helical stripes are when you've got one round of one color, one round of the next color, and it's a way of avoiding a jog and creating this continuous spiral of the two colors alternating between each other. It's like they're trying to play catch up, but the colors never actually fully catch up. I'll show you on the work what that looks like over here. So this is, I finished off my texture stitch here and I did one round 
in the in this color here, my final dark color. Now, when I started that, let me get over here. Um, when I started that, I did it. I changed right. This is the start of my row. I just dropped down the other color and I begin working with that second color. And originally you can see this with two strands here, but I just went and broke that second strand. So when I come back to work, I'm going to be just working this color. To work helical stripes after you, when you come back on the next round and you've got just three stitches left of your original color. See, this is the, I'm working now with my, we call this the dark color and this one, the medium color. When I've got three stitches left of those medium colors that haven't been taken over yet, I'm going to just drop that down and I'm going to slip those three stitches purlwise. And then let me slip my marker. Then my yarn is going to be exactly where I wanted it, right here. Where is it? Back here, because that's the stitch that we were on last. Now there I'd broken the second strand, so I'm going to make sure to pull that out. And I'm just going to begin working with just this color. And that is all there is to it. And when I come back and I've knit this medium color all the way around, when I get to three stitches from here, I'll stop. Again, I'll slip those three and then I will take up that yarn and start working up along like this. So you're, you're effectively playing catch up, working with, this, with stitch colors, changing three stitches back each time. But that will mean that you don't get a jog of color and you also don't have the two yarns twisting on top of each other as you go up. And there's one other technique I want to show you here that I use a lot. I'm going to undo a couple of stitches here when you've got a second yarn that you've broken or you want to weave in, if you take this, this is the, the tail of the other yarn that I'm trying to work in. So I'm going to bring that over to the left. This can be done if you're continental knitter as well, but it just requires that you kind of hold two yarns with the left hand. So I'm going to go and as if I'm known to knit the stitch and then this is the tail that I want to hide. It's a bit like weaving in stranded uh, color work uh, floats when you're working, if you've done that before. Then I'm going to go knit it while holding that other color out and then drop it down. So that's one stitch and then you keep it down and you knit the next stitch. The stitch after that, you lift it up and then the stitch after that, you bring it down. And you just keep alternating back and forth like that. Let me show you here what my color stripes look like. So I started off with the one inch of this. One, it looks a bit deeper because you're looking at the short rows here. But this is the one inch here, one inch here, two inches, one inch. This was my one inch that was meant to be one inch but got a little bit longer. And then I move in of the two um, alternating between them. Then this is color number two. Um, one inch of that, one inch textured, two inches of this, one inch with the texture, and now I'm going to repeat that pattern down there. Now, you're not going to necessarily be using the same kind of alternating of colors and stitch patterns, but if you can, you know, just pick the pattern or the kind of re repetitiveness that you want to fin it to work with and keep going with that through all the different colors. I quite like the way I, um, it came out taking the bottom color up for the neckline, but what you use for the neckline may actually depend on what you have the most yarn of. Because if you have an awful lot of extra yarn in one particular color, then you might opt to use that for your edging or maybe for your ribbing as well. Now, as I'm working down, the last thing to think about is both the length and also how it's going to be finished. Um, for the length, I think I'm probably going to stick with around about the 17 inches from, measured from the side where there's no short rows right at the edge going down. But before I finally decide on that, I will make sure that I uh, try it on. Put some of the stitches on a second needle and I'll try it on and make sure that it looks the length that I want. And particularly, I'll probably try it over what I'm going to wear it, like over some of the tunics and things I'll wear it with. Uh, so I can make kind of a better judgment call. And then the very last thing is just the bottom edging. Because I've done a two by two edging up here with the double stranded, I think I'm going to finish the bottom of the garment like that. 
but unlike the neck I really wanted it pulled in but I don't really want it pulled very far in at the bottom of the garment so I'm going to stick with four millimeter needles I'm not going to drop down a needle size for that and also when you're binding off at the bottom of something like this make sure you don't pull it too tightly because if you pull it tightly it'll end up puckering in and it's it, you're going to kind of it can mess up the shape of the bottom of the body so just kind of keep it a nice even bind off but not too tight would be my suggestion and I think hopefully by the end of the week I should have this body finished it takes a lot longer obviously now because you've got twice as many stitches in one round as you did in the rows back and forth so it feels like the progress is a little bit slower but yeah, I'm getting there and I, it's having these videos really gives me a bit of accountability as well because I suspect when I'm doing something like this for myself that if I wasn't doing the videos and sharing my work I would probably end up not finishing it and it would get sidelined for another project but I think I'm going to end up with something that I can wear by the time within a couple of weeks because once I've done with the body we're onto the sleeves and you're kind of on the home stretch then. So make sure you go and share and tag all of your videos again, um, not videos, your social media posts, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter with Carol Feller stash Cal and I'll be able to share them and I can see what you're up to. Um, and thanks for coming along on the stash dive knit along journey with me. Mm -hmm.